Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TSU's pregame show. I'm Andre Tolliver. I'm Cody Carr. Let's and we go. are live here at Gentry Center for the EKU versus TSU senior night game. Let's get right down to it, man. Cody, EKU, where they ranked in the conference at? EKU, it's not been the, the best year for them. You know, uh -huh. the past couple years hasn't been the best. Um, so right now, coming into this game, they're 10-18 overall, 3-10 yeah. in the conference in OBC East. Um, so I don't think anyone saw this. I mean, I guess they saw it coming because last year, but they can win. Right. Back in 2014-15 season, um, they went 21-12. and 12. Mm -hmm. um, So they, they can win with the best of them. It's just they've been rebuilding, trying right. to regrow. So I think Nation's going to be better. Um, but what about TSU? What they got coming for this game? Well, let me tell you, TSU was fired up this game. Uh -huh. They're coming off of a 12-point win from Moorhead State last game. That's a big win. That's a big real big win. win. That brought the team 7-7 overall in the OBC conference. Okay. They, they 16 and 11 in the overall conference. But you know, that's not as good as last season when they were right. 11 and five. Right. But hey, at least they're going to the championship again for the championship, the tournament again. Right, right. You know what I mean? Hopefully, Hopefully for the championship, yeah. but you know yeah. how that go. Right. So um, I guess we're just gonna have to see. As you know, the, this is a rematch game uh -huh. against EKU. Right. You know, last game it was 63 to 49. We just dominated. That was, that's, so that's what are some things, what are some key uh, strategies that EKU needs to bring into this game. So to piggyback off what you said, um, they did lose the first game EKU did. So I feel like they don't want to go 0 for 2 in the series. You want to go 2 for 0, at least mm -hmm. 500. So they want to come out yeah. swinging this game with the chip in their shoulder to beat TSU, mm -hmm. firepower. Yeah. Um, also, they need to um, set up foul triple. They average 564 personal fouls yeah. as a team. So and TSU has a high free throw percentage. So you don't want to foul a free throw shooting team like TSU, you don't want to do that. Um, so in their first matchup, uh, the bench did not show up for EKU. So they're going to need to improve uh, in order to help the starters out. Uh -huh. The player off the bench, uh, DeAndre Dishman, only had one point come off the bench. The bench had 40 minutes total. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's embarrassing. They need to yeah, do that better is a little in bad. support. Because yeah. TSU, as you know, uh, they're going to come out with keys to this game too. Or so. Well, I mean, look, I got three things. Number uh -huh. one, TSU got to maintain momentum. Right. The stats show that TSU tends to dominate overall, let's just win in the game if they're up before the half. Right. Matter of fact, they're 13 and three um, as far as winning goes whenever they, you know, are leading before the half. Okay. So as long as they get an early rhythm in the beginning of the game uh -huh. and then they just maintain a strong uh -huh. defense, I mean, they're gonna get this W. Yeah, I'm I know. I know a lot of teams are either that first half or second half team. Some teams have it both halves, but uh -huh. TSU is definitely that first half team that comes out with that punch and keeps it going. Right. Let me go ahead and get to my second thing, though. Okay. Before you, you know, my bad right, to kind of right. cut I, you I off. But I, I I'm gonna go ahead and tell you my second thing. You know, as far as beasting on defense, they got uh -huh. them. They got to go ahead and um, get. They got to go ahead and get the offensive rebounds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Martin, Wayne Martin and Jordan Reed are two players that are just phenomenal when it comes to following up with their shot right, and I've getting heard, their I've own rebounds right. and stuff yeah. like that. But uh, there's five players out there. There's right. a full team of five out there. So it everybody is. needs so to be doing it. Everybody has that. a fundamental you know what I mean? contribute, right. So I mean, if they box out on O, they gonna steal the show. Ah. That's how I feel. Hey, and number three, ah. boxing out, they also need to shoot smart. And in other words, choose their shots wisely. Right. You know what I mean? They, uh, momentum I was talking about earlier, it, it's easy to get careless with your shot selection. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? With all that momentum, you got to just calm down, find where you're at on the field, and just take the shot that you know you can make every time. There's no more fundamentals. Like, you, like, everybody's not stepping Cody or Cody Carr. Like, y'all not us. Y'all can't be like Cody, us. You shoot anywhere. Cody Carr. Okay. I like that, man. Right. I like that. Look, I actually, actually had the chance to talk to Coach Ford about their strategies coming into this game. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, good old four. Yeah. Well, our first game against them was pretty successful. I and mean, we're going to have to duplicate some of those things the second time around. Uh, they've got really good inside-outside scoring. Uh, Nick Mayo is one of the best players in the conference. We're going to have to really double-team him and get the ball out of his hands. And then on the perimeter, we're going to have to really contest their guards and keep them out of the paint. Well, I think our rebounding has improved this year. We're a lot better rebounding team this year in terms of numbers. And uh, also, our scoring is a lot more balanced this year. Uh, here, here lately, our assist numbers are higher. So I just think overall, from top to bottom, uh, we, we've spread the ball a little bit better on the offensive end. And um, hopefully, we continue to do that down the stretch. I think we need to play as a team. I mean, I, I think that needs to be our number one focus down the stretch. 
uh, offensively, defensively, uh, no matter what the case is. We, we need to defend as one unit, and we need to try to work together to get the best possible shot for TSU every single time. And if that leads to a victory, great. But, but, and if not, then, then so be it. But, but we need to focus more on being the best team we can and be. That was the man with the plan, Dana Ford. Dana you know Ford. what, I like Dana Ford because, I mean, he's just an inspiration to all mm -hmm. upcoming coaches. You know right. he's the youngest coach in the NCAA, mm -hmm. uh, the whole Division I program. Right. It's pretty crazy when you think right. about it. And, and something that is unknown about him, we're trying to get out there, he has a program called Rebound which I did my information on. So every time I the Tigers it. get a rebound, um, donations go to help support people in domestic violence uh -huh. situations. So hopefully, have to rebound something that's going on. So yeah. everybody wants to be able to go home. Hey man, that's and so yeah. That's cool, that's really right. cool. That's, that's right. really cool. So Cody, with that being said, you know this is the rematch. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? EKU and TSU already went head up one right. time. And um, this is the rematch. So right. what, are the, what are the key players going into this game? Um, key players that I saw give TSU trouble last time mm -hmm. were uh, guard Asante Gis. He had 17 points in his first matchup against the Tigers. Uh, uh -huh. He was 7 for, for 19 from the field and 2 for 8 from 3. Yeah. Um, so this guy's obviously a big problem. Uh, and so if the Tigers want any chance of winning, they're going to have to you know, step up and defend this guy. And the Colonel's going to get this, the, they're gonna have to get the ball in this guy's hands in order to win. Uh -huh. Second player I was watching, uh, power forward Nick Mayo. This guy's a beast. Nick Six Mayo, nine. I've been hearing about Nick, man. He can go, He's I call beast. him like the, the Dirt and Winsfield College. Uh, he can go from <laughs> anywhere from down low to the three. He can shoot it from the three. Uh, okay. So in the last game, he had six for 14 from the field, mm -hmm. and he was one for four from three, so he can do it anywhere. Right. So definitely have to watch out for them. Them kids can, right there that you right. gotta watch out for. I, but I TSU isn't the square up, so what you got for TSU? Look, though? I'm gonna start off with Wayne Martin. This is a 6'7", 237-pound scoring machine. Is this LeBron? Don't get in, <laughs> I know, right? What? LeBron, sound like yeah, LeBron, yeah. huh? I look, don't get in his way is all I'm saying. Right. You know, when he has that ball, he's, I mean, you can't guard somebody that that's that big. No. And that matchup needs to be either close or, I mean, he's going to get them easy buckets every time. Right. It's a big dude to guard. Right. I mean, have you ever tried to guard somebody that's 237 no, I'm, pounds? I'm not, not going to try to. Yeah. Like, that's, no. that's pretty hard when you think about it. I'm, I'm 205. Right. You know what I mean? 237, he'll beat me in the paint. Yeah. No problem. Right. So, I mean, see, that's what, and that's what he does. And when he gets hot, you know, he just steps back behind the line and makes it rain every time. Right. So, I mean, it's just, he'll find a way to get around you and make them easy buckets. Delano Spencer's another man that I'm going to go ahead and highlight. Okay. He's a transfer from Coffeeville Community College. And he, this is about two hours away from where the Jayhawks play at. Kansas, right? Just okay, to yeah. kind of give you right. a little, you know, where he's at. Right. You know, but back when he was playing with them, he was able to, uh, he, he was one of the top scorers in the Kansas Jayhawk Community College Conference. You know what I mean? So I mean, he was—he was his name was known in that conference. Not to cut you off, but that's totally like disrespect. So he definitely has a chip on his shoulder because if you like one of the, like the best players in the in the community college, yeah. right? And you don't get picked up by Kansas, and you say that's disrespect. So you can come here and ball out a little bit. But also, it gives kind of like a like a spotlight right. to that man coming into TSU because everybody's seen what you can do, right. so they expect you to perform on that level, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's like, you know, he's been here at TSU. Throughout the whole season, he's kind of proven himself mm -hmm. between his peers and his coaches. And I mean, I guess we can go ahead and call him a, 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 a natural tiger now. You know what I'm saying? He made okay. it. You know what I'm saying? Tiger in the jungle. Yeah, he had to fight to get here. Yeah. And the last but not least is Taj McCall. Now, this man recently coming back from a knee injury that he suffered earlier this month. Mm -hmm. um, but, but he came back against Moorhead State. Okay. And let me tell you, he was just out here getting steals. He looked like his old self again. He was getting steals. He was doing a little shake and bake. You know how he right. does. He's just real quick and agile on the court. That's definitely good to hear because a lot of times you don't come back the same player from those knee injuries. You don't. Uh -huh. It's not, yeah. So, so Derrick I mean, Rose, for example. No. Yeah. No. No. yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. You're absolutely right. And uh, also, I was able to sit down and talk with him kind of about uh, how he's been this season, kind of how he's worked on it. And so let's go ahead and uh, let's see what he's talking about. Uh, a lot of hard work and uh, sweat, a lot of hours. Uh, you know, you got school, you got basketball, then you got weights, then you got school again. So you lose a lot of sleep, but I mean, it's worth it. That's what you sign up for if you want to do it at this level. So a lot of hours and a lot of hard work. 
Well, you know, Cody, it's the last night here. I mean, it came pretty fast, didn't it? It did. It came, came pretty fast. fast. I mean, I remember back, I remember the first game, and now it's right. just, it, it feels like it just went by. It's like this in football season. My two right. favorite sports, and they always just seem to go by just in a blink of an eye. Right. I mean, so, we got some more sports, you know, golf, tennis. I mean, they're, they're doing pretty well. Uh -huh. so, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely catch a soccer ball game right. or yeah, soccer. Uh, we don't, well, softball. I, don't soccer, I didn't say softball. soccer ball. I meant yeah. softball. My bad, man. Yeah. Didn't get enough sleep last night. So uh, as um, senior night, as you know, we're celebrating senior night tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, that's quite an accomplishment being a four year senior. You know what I mean? It's your night. It's your celebration. Right. So I mean, how, that must be that must have a it must feel great. It's definitely amazing because you came from being a freshman, uh, aka like a scrub right. freshman, into like a big time senior. So like you definitely can walk tall and uh, hold your head up. It's your last game. Well, not your last game, but you can finally breathe a little bit. Yeah. Say, okay, it's almost. It's definitely almost a journey right. when you think about it. Um, Wayne Martin Tajir also had a couple words about senior night and how this day felt to him. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. It's going to mean a lot because TSU program, we, we came a long way from our first year here, and I was one of the players that helped, or one of the players that helped build like the program to be a better program that, like it is today. And it's going to mean a lot for me to play my last home game in front of the, the home crowd. So it's going to be real big. Uh, it actually means a lot because kind of had like a long journey to get here. And uh, the school has really been good to me, and the fans, it increased every year since I've been here. I come here three years ago. It's really increased and really shows how, how much the school loves the program. So that was Tajir and Wayne Martin, you know, two remarkable players on the team. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just, the, both are just stars of the team, man. They really right. do shine. Big time players. Oh, it's yeah. So LTSU out a lot mm -hmm. the last couple of games, so. And so, you know, as this game later on goes to a close, what uh, right. what is TSU and EKU like? Where do you see them in the postseason? So I see TSU uh, surfing into TSU the uh, into, into the tournament. TSU is swag. Surfing. So okay, they're gonna hit like a little bump in the road against Belmont in their yeah. final game. But I mean, they're gonna be AC in the tournament. So at least they made it and hopefully have a chance to you know win the tournament. Yeah. It's EKU. They're not they're not gonna make the tournament this year. But I feel like next year they're gonna come out strong. You know. They have to take their mistakes from this year uh -huh. and put them to the side. That way they'll, they'll learn for, for next year. So, yeah, this is like a whole rebuilding year for them, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, make sure you stay tuned with us. Coming up next is John Freeman. He's going to be announcing the EKU versus TSU game. So make sure you go ahead and stay tuned. This All is right. Andre Tolliver. This is Cody Carr. Thank y'all for watching. And this is TSU. We'll see you guys next time. All right.